Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowling of Bowling Small Engines, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Emacs service kit that I got. Uh, this service kit is really handy if you're wanting to work on uh, weed ears and chainsaws. Um, some of these uh, tools that I'm about to show you that's actually in the Emac kit can be applied, of course, to the small engines. Uh, such as the, the pressure tester, which I'll show you here in a minute. You can use it to pressure test your carburetors on the, the Briggs engines as well. You know, pop off pressure. Uh, I actually do have a little more advanced pop off pressure uh, tester that I'll show you later in another video. But uh, for right now, I want to show you what basically would have came with this kit. There are a few additional items that I've added over the years uh, to this EMAC kit. But um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off of here and give you an idea, first of all, as to what might potentially be in there. Uh, as you can see, it's not exactly the cleanest. I cleaned it out just a little while ago, some of the tools anyway, where I'd better be able to show you as to what they are and what they're potentially used for. Um, this particular kit was set up for uh, EFCO. Uh, EFCO has a really amazing product and there's nothing wrong with them uh, very reliable very dependable they are a little bit on the pricier side but I promise you that you're getting quality equipment when you get an FCO remember I said FCO not ECHO don't get me wrong ECHO's got some nice you know, nice equipment as well but I don't think that they're to the standards of FCO I'm going to start out by telling you a little bit about each one of these tools. This is a tool that I mentioned earlier. This tool here is made to take pressure okay, on carburetors, for weeders, chainsaws. Uh, as I said, you can use it for your small engines you know, to check the uh, inlet valve to make sure that it's not leaking. But uh, they're actually used, or this particular one is actually used for weed eaters and chainsaws. Um, Basically what you do, it works off an adapter, which I'll show you here. You take this adapter, as you can see, you plug the adapter in, that, you find your carburetor or your exhaust plug up either side. I think this particular one is actually meant for an exhaust. Um, this one here would be actually used for an intake. So we'll just go to it. You plug it just like this. The hose goes on the end of this. Pump it up. I'm just using my finger as an example. If you saw a leak after you pump it up, after you put it, hook it up to a carburetor, and it was doing this gradually, you know you obviously got a leak in that carburetor. You need to go through it, clean it, uh, do what it takes to get that carburetor to work. Uh, inlet needle as well. If you have a leak, Obviously, you know there's a problem. Now, this is a very handy tool. On the muffler side, you typically have a little piece of rubber like this that you put behind the muffler, between the cylinder and the exhaust of your muffler. You slide it between, you bolt it down real tight. Not screeching tight, but tight enough to where, you know, uh, you obviously ain't going to have an air leak. And as I said before, you use this little tool to pressure test it. That also will check your uh, crankcase pressure uh, to make sure that you don't have an impulse line that's leaking, uh, a baffle, uh, spark plug. I've even seen them leak around the spark plug threads over the years. Uh, you know, they can leak just about anywhere, but this is a good tool to find it. As funny as it might sound, you can get one of these <laughs> just about anywhere. 
pull the end off of it. It makes an excellent tool for listening to those air leaks. A little soapy water goes a long ways, guys. You can pour it right on the chainsaws and weed eaters and actually wash the bubbles. Uh, that's a good indication that, of course, you got a leak. I've talked enough about the pressure tester. I'm going to go into the knockoff tools for your flywheels. As you can see, they're threaded. I've got one, two, three, four, five of them. I think four of which actually came in the EMAC kit that I purchased. Um, you basically undo the nut on the flywheel, tighten these down, hit them with a hammer, and you can knock your flywheel off. On some of the flywheels that you'll run into, you need a special tool to take them off. There are several of these tools for different models. Okay, this happens to be one for a steel and a Husqvarna. There's so many of them, I couldn't even begin to tell you which ones you would need for what. As far as I know, I've seen up to 30 of these, okay? So you just have to find you one to fit your model chainsaws or weed ears that you're working on. These are sill installation tools. Really handy. I use this one quite a bit. This is one as well. You can also place your bearings on them and you know, push bearings in if you got a vise. Very handy little tools. These are your clutch removal tools. I think this one's for a Polan. And this one's for a Fco or an Echo. And they're very handy little tools. This is also a seal installation tool. As I said, pretty, pretty nice little tool. You get this with the kit when you buy the EMAC kit. And as I said, if it was me and I was going to buy a kit, that would be the route that I would go. Um, this is a basic kit. Some of these uh, parts came with it. Some of them I had to I'd buy actually additionally, but most of them I have to tell you, as far as the block off plates. They came with the kit. The kit will come with spacers. These spacers are used with the little block off kits just because some bolts are a little longer on some uh, chainsaws than they are on others. So that's why you, you see all these. Those are just spacers. They come with the kit. I would highly recommend that you get a good pin light. Stylus makes an excellent one. Uh, Stylus Stream Light. And these little things are super bright, as you can tell. Very handy for seeing if your cylinders are scored and whether you know you potentially want to pursue a project or not. The next thing I would mention is an alcohol tester. This is very important. You need one of these. The way the gasoline is anymore. I highly recommend that you buy one of these. They're about six to eight dollars on eBay. This particular uh, screwdriver here is used to pull limiter caps out of the carburetor so you can adjust them. And I think this will really help you guys out. Uh, a lot of people don't realize they actually make a tool to pull the limiter caps out. Uh, there it is. They, they actually do. And there's no part number on this, but it did come with the EMAC kit. This tool here actually came with the EMAC kit. They call it the Pac-Man. It's got a very unique little design on the inside of it. And that's why they call it the Pac-Man. It actually looks like a, a little Pac-Man symbol. They call this tool a double D. You can see why. It's got like a, a D shape on each side. This tool I had to actually purchase on eBay separately. 
part number is 09987001 this tool here came with the kit it's the single D I showed you the double D just a second ago uh, it doesn't have a part number but you can purchase these on eBay you can actually purchase a whole set of what I'm about to show you that I have and this one just doesn't have the part number this is the spline one, okay? This is a spline screwdriver. Uh, you typically see a lot of the carburetors with the splines built on them anymore. I would recommend you get this tool. Uh, this one came with the kit, the EMAC kit that I showed you. Uh, it doesn't have a part number, but as I said, you can look up every one of these. All you got to do is specify that you want the splined uh, carburetor adjusting tool for a small engine, and they will show up on eBay. I think they're anywhere between eight to ten dollars a piece. This tool I got from Oregon. It's just a Torx bit. Uh, this one is a T27 Torx by Irwin. The reason I got this is because T27 fits typically all of your steel and your Husqvarna chainsaws. I see a lot of steel and Husqvarna chainsaws. next tool that I would tell you you need is a good set of forceps. You can see this is an extremely long set. This is good for reaching in, grabbing those fuel lines when you're trying to feed them in the gas tank and pulling them out. And this of course is a smaller set. I'm running out of time in this video, but I'm going to show you in the next video some specialty tools.